This past summer, I went to a woodworking event in Oklahoma, and while I was there, I picked up this beautiful slab of Osage Orange from my friend Ted Alexander. And the moment I laid my eyes on this slab, I knew what it was going to be because at the time, I was designing an outdoor fire pit uh, for our backyard at home. And so this had a really nice curve to it, and so I figured it would be the, the perfect bench for our backyard to go around the fire pit. Uh, so I was really excited to get started on this. The first thing I did was just rip all the bark off of it. And when I did, all of this color just popped out of the live edge. I was just really excited about how the, how the live edge looked and all the color variation. Um, so I was just really excited about getting some finish on that and see how that was going to pop. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to think about was how I was going to do the legs. And the thing that I settled on was a I was going to drop one side uh, across cut part of the slab off and drop it down for one of the legs and it was going to have this mitered corner look and so I had to figure out you know the height of the leg and all that and cut the cut the angles there and on the other side uh, I was going to make some hickory legs I was going to turn a couple of legs and have some splayed legs on one end and, and like I said on the other end was going to be this the slab leg so I'm turning the legs down here just to a, a rough shape. Uh, the final shape that I'm looking for is just a, a tapered leg uh, from the middle. And it's tapered down on both in both directions. Uh, it's just a simple look. Uh, but I'll get back to the legs a little bit later on. The next thing I wanted to do was to figure out where I wanted to put some bow ties. I had a few splits in this slab on the ends. And so I wanted to put some bow ties in there and just kind of dress it up a little bit and uh, give it a, a nice look. And I'm, I'm cutting the bow ties out of the same hickory that I'm doing the legs with. And so it should tie all together. And so what I did, I just took a strip of hickory, uh, it's long grain here, uh, draw out what shape I want for each individual split. And then I go to the bandsaw and cut it and then I'll take it back over to the slab and trace it out. And I'll be sure to number those so I don't get anything mixed up. I'll know which bow tie goes where. Uh, and after I got it traced out, I just take my router and I just hog away uh, the majority of the waste uh, as, as much as I can without going over the line. And then once I get all of that routed out, I can go back with a chisel and clean up the corners and clean up the sides. I like to put a little angle uh, down towards the bottom of the uh, recess there to kind of give the glue somewhere to go kind of gives it a better bond. And so that was a, a good experience. I haven't done a whole lot of bow ties, but uh, it was really fun getting the mallet and the chisel all out and going to work. So when I get all that cleaned up, I can take and put my bow ties in, just glue it, uh, just spread the glue around like crazy and just tap the, the bow ties down into place. And now I did have a few gaps here and there that I had to go back and fill, uh, but I'm not really looking for a perfect fit. I just want this because the slab itself is not, you know, without defect. I mean, it does have splits and it does have knots here and there. So I just think it goes goes hand in hand with the butterflies or the bow ties, whatever you want to call them. So um, I was really happy with the way all that came out. So to take the bow ties down flush to the slab, I took my number five Stanley plane and basically just went all the way down as far as I could to the slab before I started planing the slab itself. Uh, because what I'll do is, as you see here, just take my sander and just sand everything down flush to the slab. Now, I'm going to move on and, and try to get this leg glued up. And this was probably the most awkward glue up I've ever been through. Uh, there was probably a better way to do this, but uh, I was ready to get this in place. And all I could think about was just getting that leg to... Uh, be attached to the bench and so I just take a uh, clamping square and clamp it the best way I, I can here and then on the other side I've got a, a like an old oak block just a scrap piece um, that I'm using as a, like a, a clamping square basically and I can get that where I want to now I didn't show it in the video but I did a dry fit previous to this to where I got it where I want it and I made some reference marks and then I went back and glued it up I'm going to be using dowels to join this leg to the bench seat. Uh, so as you're looking at this, this bench is basically upside down. And I'm 
what I did was just mark out a couple of marks for each hole. I'm going to have two on the leg side and two on the bench top side. And they're going to be offset so they don't interfere with one another. Uh, so I've got the uh, Forstner bit chucked up in my, into my drill at the desired uh, depth. So I know when my drill bottoms out, that is, you know, that's as far as I need to go, obviously. But that will give me enough of the dowel rod into the bench top seat to really make this secure and so I feel confident that this thing is not coming loose. Uh, so I got two of those holes drilled out. I filled them with glue and just spreading those all around. And then I can start just putting the dials in. Now, it's really a tight fit, but I, once I got these in here, I, I felt really, really good about how secure this was going to be. So once I got these dials uh, hammered all the way in to where they just bottomed out, I just took a handsaw and just cut these off. Uh, these are poplar dials, so they're not really hard to work with. Uh, really easy to cut and uh, really easy to sand as well. So I had to flip this thing over and it was really heavy. So now I've got to drill two more holes uh, in the top, which is the seat, and put two more dials in the top. Now I've got, I'm gonna have, when this is all said and done, I'm gonna have two in the leg side horizontally and then two in the seat, which, are, which will be vertical. Uh, should give me a really good solid joint. And the miter live edge here shouldn't shouldn't separate um, we'll see over time what happens uh, but I feel really good about how this joint turned out so now that I, I got all that cut off and everything just sanded out flush looked really really good uh, I was very happy with the way that turned out so moving on to the the legs I've got a couple of hickory legs here that I've turned down uh, I'm trying to figure out where to put these and the angle that I want because I want these legs splayed and so I'm going about this probably the wrong way, but what I'm doing is holding up the digital angle finder to my drill every so often and checking the angle and drilling that hole with my drill. Uh, so here I'm, I'm cutting the tenon on the legs. And by the way, you'll probably notice that I'm working on a different lathe here. Um, that's another story, but anyway. So I'm checking the uh, tenon to make sure I've got it at the right size for the hole that I've drilled uh, But before I put these legs in I want to take and I want to drill a small hole all the way through because I'm gonna once I get these legs glued in I'm gonna flip this bench over and also peg the the top of the legs through the slab with more dials and so I want to Give myself a mark where to drill those holes. I'll show you in a second so now I can move on to the glue up for the legs. Uh, this is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Just put glue in the hole and uh, put the legs in where they go. It's not really uh, a wrong or right way here. Just put the legs in, give it a little slight twist, and uh, they should be good to go. Uh, by the way, these fit really, really good. I was happy with the way these turned out as well. Uh, so far, things are going as planned. So now that I'm on the top, you can see over on the left that I've already done one. And what I'm doing is I'm drilling down into that leg, and you'll notice the different color chips that I'm bringing out. Part of that is the leg, which was good. I know that I hit it. And I'm just taking a dial from the top and hammering it down into the top of that leg through the slab. And kind of what that creates is a stepped tenon, basically. Uh, once the glue cures, it should be really, really strong. Uh, and again, I have no uh, issues, or I don't expect any issues with the legs uh, coming loose. So when all that sanded out nice and flush, it all looks good to me. And I can move on to something else, which is the leveling of the feet. Now I've got uh, the slab leg is very, very uneven. Um, the hickory legs, I basically cut those off about an inch or half an inch too long and so I just want to sand those down at an angle uh, to give me the right 
distance from the bottom of the foot to the top of the bench, which is, a, which is about 18 inches, is what I was shooting for. Uh, and while I've got this thing flipped over and uh, easy to work with, I go ahead and just try to get all the saw marks out of the ends of the uh, slab, which is really cool on this slab because it's got like a three branch type uh, look on the end of that. And here I'm trying to uh, level the slab leg out and there was really no good way to do this. I just take my Sawzall and just start hacking away at it and eventually I get this to where I want it. Uh, but you get the idea. Normally the finishing part of any project that I do is probably my least favorite. Uh, the of applying the finish because I don't like to paint or spray but the actual transformation from when the finish is actually on the project I absolutely love because with this particular project this bench came alive once the finish was applied to the bench uh, I could not be happier with, with the way this this turned out uh, I learned a lot through this project uh, I tried some different things that I haven't tried before uh, I got better at some things. I made some mistakes on a few things. But overall, the bench exceeded my expectations. I'm very happy with the way it looks. And I might end up moving this thing inside uh, because I have a little bit of uh, fear that this thing is going to get ruined out in the rain and the weather and all that. Uh, but we'll see. If you would like to know more about this project, there will be a link down in the description that will lead you over to our website where we've got a detailed website article on this entire project. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would check that out and share it with your friends and family. Share this video uh, while you're there on the website. Sign up for our newsletter where you can stay on the inside with what we're doing. Um, and if you're not a subscriber to, to this channel, I would encourage you to please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos that we have coming out. So thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.